Traditional journalism is costly, and it remains to be seen just how many are willing to continue to cover those costs. If you think about what it takes to pay just a reporter, much less the newsroom who supports her, to spend months in the field learning what's happening, cultivating sources, digging into documents and research, it's expensive. But that's the kind of reporting and information that we need because there are so few other sources to get those perspectives. Over the last 20 to 30 years, and really intensifying over the last decade, there have been massive closings of foreign bureaus. There's only actually about five newspapers left that have multiple foreign bureaus. We have a young, we call them millennials, beginning to kind of grow up on free content, free apps, free news sites, downloading free movies, free music. So the idea that I have to pay for content, whether it's news or entertainment content, is slowly kind of coming back, but you know, 10 years, 15 years of that is really hard to wean out of the behavior of consumers. That attitude towards allowing everything to be automated allowed fake news to really take on a life of its own. And I'm not sure that we can put the genie back in the bottle. This is going to take a lot of effort and understanding by Americans that uh, they should want real news and they should want balanced news. And that takes education. Like traditional media, social media is controlled by private companies, many of which are taking steps to end the abuse of their platforms. We've seen very dark acts arise on Facebook Live, which has challenged the company to ask itself, are they responsible for preventing violence or suicide on their own platform? And they've answered, well, we've got to do better. And they've hired people, and they're trying to write algorithms to detect problems before they occur. But the underlying question is, are they a neutral platform, or are they an editorial platform? There's a lot of soul searching going on in Silicon Valley about uh, the role that platforms like Facebook and Twitter played in the dissemination of false information. There is a responsibility that these companies have to at least be cognizant of what is being spread on their platforms. Social media titans are coming to understand they have been enabling those people yelling fire in the crowded theater. If you asked Facebook, are you responsible for your content, you know, they'd do their best to get off the hook. Even if they were able to hire a lot of people to do that, would we trust those people they'd hired? Wouldn't we immediately accuse them of bias? Wouldn't there be polarization? Crossing the line between publisher and platform poses challenges, but it may be in the interest of social media companies to get out ahead of the problem. I'm trying to get us down from La La Land here. The truth of the matter is you have five million advertisers that change every month, every minute, probably every second. You don't have the ability to, to know who every one of those advertisers is, do you? I care deeply about the democratic process and protecting its integrity. Facebook's mission is all about giving people a voice and bringing people closer together. Those are democratic values and we're proud of them. I don't want anyone to use our tools to undermine democracy. That's not what we stand for. It's gonna be expensive to have human moderation, but that's what news organizations have wrestled with for a long time. And if internet companies are gonna get effectively into the news business, into the information business, they also have to accept some of that responsibility as well. And indeed, to their credit, since the election, they have taken some of the old steps in that direction. The most important thing to understand about the social media revolution as it relates to journalism is that for the first time in 60 years, broadcasters and publishers have lost control of their distribution. They can no longer be in business unless they take on Facebook or Snap as a partner. That's where the audiences are. It's incumbent on news organizations to make sure that they maintain standards of the flow of information as they make a transition from traditional print media to digital to social media and spreading news and information more quickly, more widely. If we don't maintain our own standards of how we deliver the information, then we're part of the problem. The turbulence now underway marks a transition between old business models governing news and information and the dawn of a new digital era. 
Ultimately, it is the consumers of information who will need to decide what kind of media they want. Great Decisions is America's largest discussion program on global affairs. Discussion groups meet in community centers, libraries, places of worship, and homes across the country to discuss global issues with their community. Participants read the eight-topic briefing book, meet to discuss each topic, and complete a ballot, which shares their views with Congress. To start or join a discussion group in your community, visit greatdecisions.org or call 1-800-477-5836. Great Decisions is produced by the Foreign Policy Association in association with Thomson Reuters. Funding for Great Decisions is provided by PricewaterhouseCoopers, LLP.